Hello friends, welcome back to Prosto Hub, myself Dr. Jolsna and this is our second session of the current topic that is practical exam preparation with case history discussion. I hope everyone have followed the first session where we discussed the general things that you have to take care while preparing for your practical exam and under the case history we discussed the patient data, the chief complaint, the systemic status, the personal history, dental history and extra oral examination. Next, we are going to discuss the intraoral examination. So, before getting into detail, I request everyone to please do like and share my videos if you are finding them useful. And if you are new to this channel, Prosto Hub, please, please do subscribe and show your support. If you have any queries, any topic that needs to be discussed or any feedbacks, you can comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail ID. So, let's begin. So first let us examine the condition of the mucosa which is uh, classified by house as healthy mucosa, irritated and pathologic mucosa. So we know that healthy mucosa is of light pink in color which exhibits no sign of injury or irritation. Usually the thickness is 1 to 1.5 millimeter with adequate keratin layer and evenly distributed over the ridge. Whereas in some cases you can see irritated mucosa like a fibrous or a hyperplastic mucosa in cases of uh, ill-fitting dangers or when there is excessive VD, bruxism, allergy or systemic conditions. So in such cases corrective surgical measures must be instituted before impression procedures are started. And then comes the pathologic mucosa for example leukoplakia which is a pre-malignant condition and that is manifested as white patches especially on the mucous membrane on lips, tongue and cheeks. So all these have to be examined. Next one is the arch form which is classified as square, tapering and ovoid. So as you can see here, this is the square, tapering and ovoid arch form. So the arch form supports the danger by offsetting the rotational movement of the danger base. So the class 1 that is the square type has, is the best form to prevent the rotational movement and uh, the tapering one is the least favorable. Next is the residual ridge form. So the maxillary residual ridge can be classified as class 1 that is square to gently rounded. So this is the most favorable one which resists the lateral displacement and since it has got parallel uh, sides it maintains a seal and also resists vertical displacement. Next is the tapering or V shaped which resists lateral displacement but the vertical displacement breaks the seal in all the places. And the third one that is the flat one which is having a flat vault. So it resists vertical displacement but only little resistance to lateral displacement. So this is about maxillary residual ridge. Now the mandibular residual ridge is classified as the first one that is inverted U shape that is uh, with the broad crest and parallel walls which can be either tall or medium. The class 2 that is again inverted U shape but with flat crest and short walls. Third one is the unfavorable one it can be a tall thin inverted V or it can be a short inverted V or it can be an inverted W. So this is the classification of mandibular residual ridge form. Now remember the class 1 is the most favorable one. So a danger that is resting on a broad base or ridge will be more comfortable than the one resting on a sharp spiny ridge or a flat one. So the class 1 is the most favorable one. Next is the inter arch space. So before that we have discussed the uh, residual ridge form. So you can expect a question of about Atwood's classification of the uh, resorbed ridges that is very important you should never miss that. So there are uh, six orders uh, the pre extraction, the post extraction, high well rounded, knife edge, low well rounded and depressed. So th that is a classification of resorbed ridge Atwood's classification of resorbed ridges. Now coming to inter arch space. So how you will measure the inter arch space that is the distance between the maxillary and mandibular ridge and this is the space where you occupy your dangers. So this is usually measured when the patient maintains the rest position. So when the patient is in the rest position you part the lips and check for the space and it is usually measured at the premolar region. Now let us see the classification. So the class 1 where there is ideal inter arch space to accommodate the artificial teeth. So ideally it should be 15 to 20 millimeter. The class 2 that is excessive inter arch space. So here there is poor stability and retention for the danger because of increased leverage forces. And then the class 3 
there is insufficient inter art space so here also teeth setting and freeway space maintenance will be difficult next is the ridge parallelism which is the relative parallelism between the planes of the ridge so class 1 where both ridges are parallel to the occlusal plane so teeth setting in such cases is very easy whereas in class 2 mandibular ridge is divergent from the occlusal plane and that is anteriorly it is divergent so when there is a teeth loss the residual ridge starts to diverge and non parallel ridges will cause movement of the denture bases when the teeth occlude because of an unfavorable direction of force so class 2 where the mandibular ridge is divergent from occlusal plane anteriorly next is a class 3 where the maxillary ridge is divergent from the occlusal plane anteriorly or the maxillary or mandibular ridge are divergent anteriorly. So, these are the three classes of ridge parallelism. So, next is the ridge relationship which we know that is class 1 normal, class 2 retrognathic profile and class 3 prognathic profile. So, you can expect a question on how to set the teeth in such a different ridge relation. So, how in retrognathic and prognathic cases how do you set teeth to attain balanced occlusion that is an expected question next is the lateral throat form and uh, we know that this is the distal portion of the alveololingual sulcus and the danger extended to this area can resist horizontal forces and also increase the border ceiling now the gold standard classification for the lateral throat form is the neal classification so he classified it according to the extent of anterior movement of the retromyelohyoid curtain as the tongue is extended anteriorly. Now how we are going to check this lateral throat form either by using your finger or by using the mouth mirror. You place it in the uh, retromolar area when the patient protrudes the tongue. So in class 1 the mouth mirror is not at all visible when the tongue is in slightly protruded position. So this is the most favorable one for retention and stability and there is no movement to the uh, clinical finger or the mouth mirror when the patient protrudes the tongue. So, that is class 1. Now, class 2 where uh, it is half as long and narrow as class 1 and twice the length of class 3. So, this is in between class 1 and class 3 where half of the mouth mirror is visible and it is less favorable than class 1. And finally, the class 3 where the entire mouth mirror is visible which is the least favorable and when you place the mouth mirror or finger it gets completely displaced. And here the danger border ends 2 to 3 millimeter below the mylohyoid ridge or just at the ridge. So, this is the classification, Neal's classification of the lateral throat form. This is an important viva question. Coming to the classification of soft palate which is based on the degree of flexure the soft palate makes with the hard palate. So, there are three classes class 1 where the soft palate is uh, horizontal and also there is very little muscular movement. So, this is the most uh, favorable condition because it has got more tissue coverage for the palate seal. The class 2 where the soft palate turns downwards at about an angle of 45 degree to that of the hard palate and here the amount of tissue coverage is comparatively less than that of class 1. Coming to class 3 where the soft palate turns downwards sharply at about an angle of 70 degree. So, this is acute relation the hard palate the soft palate makes with the hard palate and this is the least favorable position because there is very less palatal seal. Next coming to palatal sensitivity which was classified according to house as class 1 normal, class 2 subnormal or hyposensitive and class 3 supernormal or hypersensitive. Now, the palatal sensitivity is evaluated by running a mouth mirror over the soft palate with a very light pressure. So, a slight or no response is the most favorable and a moderate gagging can be controlled by careful handling of the impression procedure and constant reassurance or diverting the patient's attention from the procedure. But severe gaggers offer a poor prognosis and should be evaluated carefully. Sometimes we need to give counseling or medication for such cases. Also the application of uh, local anesthetic spray will help you in impression procedure. Now another question that you can expect in this section is about the posterior palatal seal area. So what is the definition of PPS? the anterior posterior vibrating line how do you check for it what should you do if you overextend or underextend a danger all these things you should be thorough with 
Uh, I have done a special session on posterior palatal seal area with some of the important viva questions. If you uh, want to know more, please do watch that session. Coming to the classification of mucosal attachments or the border attachments. So, class 1 attachments are high in maxilla or low in mandible with relation to that of the ridge crest. So, that is a uh, 0.5 inches or more between the level of attachment and the crest of the ridge and class 2 where the attachment height in relation to the crest is between 0.25 and 0.5 inches and class 3 where the attachment height is less than 0.25 inches. Coming to the frenal attachment which is also classified in a similar manner as that of the border attachment. So, house has classified it as class 1, class 2, class 3, class 1 high in maxilla or uh, low in mandible with respect to the crest of the ridge. Class 2 that is a uh, medium attachment and class 3 where the phrenae encroaches onto the crest of the ridge and this may interfere with the danger seal. So, surgical corrections may be required. So, this is about phrenal attachments. Next is about the saliva, the amount and consistency of saliva. So, when the salivary secretion is uh, deficient, it results in dry mouth which causes soreness and so the mucosa gets easily injured and can result in poor retention for the danger. And when there is excessive saliva, that also complicates danger construction, especially the impression making. So, you can expect voids in the impression and also there is chance for gagging. Now, the saliva consistency which can be thin serous or thick ropey saliva. So, the serous uh, saliva is the best one and the normal amount and viscosity is the most favorable. When there is a thin watery saliva, it may again affect retention and a thick ropey saliva complicates the impression making and also it is annoying to the patient as it clings to the danger. Now, the classification of saliva, it is class 1 with normal quality and quantity of saliva. Class 2 excessive saliva which is uh, mucinous and class 3 where there is deficient saliva that is xerostomia and the remaining saliva is again containing mucus. So, this is about saliva and under the saliva section you can expect a question on how to manage a xerostomia patient. So, the general things you have to take care while taking impression and all other procedures you have to be thorough with. Next is about the tongue size and position. So, again house has classified the tongue as class 1 which is normal in size development and function and sufficient teeth present to give normal form and function. Whereas class 2 where the teeth have been absent long enough in order to permit a change in the form and function of the tongue and class 3 where there is excessively large tongue because all teeth have been absent for an extended period of time. So, there is abnormal development of the size of the tongue. So, this is the classification of the tongue size. Next, coming to the right classification of the tongue position. So, class 1 where the tongue lies in the floor of the mouth and it is confined by the mandibular teeth. So, the lateral borders will be resting on the occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth whereas the apex rests on the incisal edges of the anterior teeth. And class 2 where there is flat broad tongue. So, here it fills the floor of the mouth and covers the alveolar ridges. So, that will make the impression procedure difficult and danger stability is also difficult to attain because the dangers move with the movement of the tongue. And class 3, it is a small retracted and curled up tongue. So, this uh, facilitates impression making but might jeopardize the lingual seal. So, this is the right classification of the tongue positions. So, we have almost covered everything under the intraoral examination and coming to the next session that is radiographic examination which we will be continuing in our next session. So, thank you all once again for watching my video and please do like, share and subscribe to my channel if you are finding these videos useful and if you have any queries or any suggestions, feedbacks or any topic that needs to be discussed, do comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id. So, it's bye from Prosto Hub until our next session.